Okay. Again, our marquee game will be between uh, Prague and Magnus. And, uh, Alrighty, I'm jumping for joy because Pragnanda has opened with e4 and Magnus Carlsen has played my beloved, or oh, our beloved, <coughs> Kara Khan. Yes, so, and, and uh, we, we, Yi uh, versus Vincent will be our backup. So, captures on d5, a very sedate play by Prague. It kind of shows that he doesn't have any preparation <laughs> for the Karo, because this is not a dangerous line. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. It's not, it's not. Not. Everyone plays it these days, no, yes, it's not. literally. It's not. it's not. I mean, there's nothing. It's literally the most popular response to the Karakan over all levels. It's terrible. <laughs> uh, no, easy. Oh, but e did you see Magnus played e6? Yeah, it, I'm more of a fan of the move queen c7 there, mm -hmm. by the way. Uh, but this is also a uh, Perfectly, perfectly fine. Remember, in the opening, you need just three goals. Your fair share of the center, good development, safety for your king. And if you look at the position after, for example, bishop d7, I'm just put a move on the board, mm -hmm. you'll see that black's king is safe. Yeah. He's safe. He's got pretty good uh, control of the center. I mean, he's got an extra pawn in the center. There's a c3 versus e6. That's the imbalance, That's, right? Yeah. And... Um, well, I won't say he's got great development. It's okay, the knight on e7, bishop on d7. The move f7, f6, it's a prelude. He wants to play rook to e8 and e5. Right. So you're telling me that this is what white is aspiring for. You know, believe it or not, Yasser, these days everyone is playing this. I get it all the time. And um, this is this is a really trendy idea that's kind of developed over the last few years. And basically White wants to just expand as much as possible on the Queen side and say, I got extra space. Been there, done that. Yeah. Uh, trust me, I've played uh, thousands of games with the Caro and French and Perks. And these, these variations never frighten me uh, whatsoever. I really felt I was uh, more than even Steven. A4, okay, kind of a prelude. What you're going to do, play A5, B5. Magnus says, I don't know what you're driving at, young man, but uh, you're leaving a backward pawn on yeah. uh, C3. So usually, Black's, white, sorry, White's whole idea is actually to secure the C5 square for a piece. So usually they'll be going A5. This is with the pawn on B7 and then, then going knight to B3, B3, then C5. And then they're saying, ha, come and get me now. Oh, yeah. I've oh, yeah. got a nice clamp on the queen side. And then we see Pragnando lift the rook up to E3. Rook to E3. Okay, that for me is basically saying, I kind of want to defend this pawn. At the same I time, I it's mean... It's very provocative because e5 is very tempting. And more than tempting. I, that, that's what Magnus has been playing for. I think there's a trick in the position. Uh, e5 immediately, there is this nasty little trick. Check mm. this one out. Nice. Whoop. c4, yeah. Uh, what? I thought that, no, you can't take because that's a discover check on your queen. So that is one thing that... Uh, you, when, when you when you time the move e5, you don't want to see this type of a tactic. Bishop d7 to e8. e8. I like this move. Do you think the bishop is going to f7 or perhaps even going to g6? Well, uh, it doesn't matter actually whether it be g6 or it be h5. They're more active squares than the bishop on d7. Mm -hmm. If you force me to, yes, I wanted to say, if you play queen e1 and you force me to put the bishop on f7, I think the bishop is actually more flexible on f7 than d7, as, again, uh, at a certain moment, I will deal with the e6 pawn, and I'll have something uh, going on on the queen side. Like you said, a5, hoping that Please take the pawn so that you can get your, your knight. Uh, you'll, you'll go b5, of course, but then you can get your knight comfy mm -hmm. to c5. Knight f5, and that's Magnus Carlsen at his provocative best. He said, excuse me, uh, I would like to interrupt your, your grand desi designs on the queen side. I'm going to play knight f5 and tickle your rook. What do you say? Would you take it? Well, the, the alternative is just stepping back with the rook to e2. That is the alternative. And that looks 
clunky as clunky. anything. Right, put the rook on e2 and, and then what? Whereas the knight on f5 is suddenly a fantastic piece. It is, and it's a, it's a really, really provocative challenge. You can capture it and double the pawns, but then at the end, you go, okay, where's the dynamic play in the position thereafter? Right. Not really there. Rook came back to e2. I would expect something like rook to e8, defending the pawn on e6, because he would then play bishop g6 mm -hmm. or bishop h5, as, as mentioned before. Is time, are the clocks a factor yet? Not yet. Not yet. Magnus Carlsen with 3 minutes and 11 seconds. But Pragnanda, he is the one lagging a little bit in time, just under two and a half minutes. Love and this move, 97, 97, by the way. 97, beautiful move. Also, the knight is perhaps thinking about rerouting to g6 and provoking For, yes, some even kind more. of light square weakness, but he simply steps back with the queen. Queen c7, that indicates to me that... He that wants knight, the knight on d6. Yes, he, he wants to try knight to d6, but I actually liked your idea of knight to g6 to f4 instead of the move queen d6. I thought the queen was fine on d6, but he has played that, and again, um, you were saying... Uh, Prague is the Prague one. Prague now under is two minutes, on it's slipping clock. away from him. But also, I do like Queen D7 because Knight D6 is a terrifying move. It's what? terrifying in a positional level. Knight D6. Knight D6. Because the knight is getting ready to jump into outposts. Knight yes. C4. Yes. Maybe even Knight to E4. Well. And how are you ever going to dislodge a knight like that? And suddenly, it looks like the exchange variation against the Karakhan is toothless. <laughs> toothless. Uh, in fact, probably your best move in this position, which is illegal according to the FIDE regula regulations, is to drop back with a pawn, b4, mm -hmm. b2. And after all, it was Prague who created the backward pawn on c3, suffering a little. Rook a6 is trying to say, this pawn is meaningful, let me... Uh, let me okay. attack it. Maybe now it's time just to go all in on the A-line. <laughs> Double rook up the rooks. Okay, so H4. I don't see H5 as being a threat. That looks like an over, uh, an overly enthusiastic, I want to say. I'd bring the rook on F8 into play. Maybe rook he's, he's to getting ready for C8. He played rook E5. to E8. Okay, a clear indication that Magnus wants to play with his extra central pawn. He wants to play for e5. Knight f5, also a little bit of a surprise move. I would have thought that if you want to play for e5, you'd probably want to play knight to c6 and e5. Magnus played knight to f5. Yeah, but he's uh, doing some beautiful things, like knight. Okay, so no. we see the rook come Couple to trades. a7, and this is what I like about Magnus. He doesn't care about pawn structure. Instead, it's all about peace harmony, getting his pieces onto good squares. <coughs> He's certainly done that, and uh, the move rook on a8, there's a pin. Um, and Magnus, after this move rook a8, is really being invited to play knight to e4, locking things up. Blessings. A good cough. <laughs> Nothing like a good cough. Yep. Rook to b8. Every commentator's worst nightmare. Exactly. Exactly. <coughs> well, that move, by the way, does come with a threat. It unpins the, the rook on e8, so it does attack the queen. Queen to a1. Well, uh, Prague got what he wanted, if, that, if I can put it like that. He got control of the a-file. Not that I think the A file is that meaningful. I've got moves like F4, followed by bishop to G6. I've also got bishop H5. H5. And who's enjoying the proceeds? We are about to find <laughs> out. Again, times look... Times, okay, we're well, pregnant and now under the minute mark. That's what and I was And that's asking. when it gets critical. Yeah, that's <laughs> when it's uh, squeaky bottom time. Exactly. <laughs> well, one of the things I have noticed, I, 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 observe, I, I saw it written in a book, that uh, one, one is in time trouble. They tend to make, you tend to make uh, two types of, types of mistakes. One of them is just simply to recklessly push pawns, yep. which is exactly how we saw where you lose. Yep. Another one is just simply to make simplifications because you can't handle the tension in the position, right. so you seek, you look for clarifications. And each and trade slips a little bit exactly. your, your position. And oh. Okay, but okay. Magnus spent he, a very 
wow, he spent an incredibly long time to play the move rook takes a8. It was like he, he, he was unsure of how to continue. I really don't like the trade. I think that he very much let a lot of his advantage slip away. Funnily enough, you were just ex about to explain about you <laughs> simplifications. Know, simplifications, and there we go. I really like the move f4 instead. And now Magnus' advantage is gone. It's just gone. The queen on a7 is simply too good. It's very, it's very active, but on the other hand, white's king is a little bit shaky, and we do see the knight come to d2. And now this is the move I've been wanting for a long, yes. long time. The knight jumps into e4. It promptly gets traded off. And just to update you on a result, Arjun Aragaisi has defeated uh, Gukesh. Big result there. Uh, captures on e4 now. I'm expecting this knight to come back to f1. Knight to f1, g3, and knight to e3. And by the way, 16 seconds, uh, a lot of... Oof, 15 uh, seconds? Yeah, a lot of time being spent. I, okay, is I it now time to... <laughs> And in other news, Wei, Wei Yi has beaten Vincent Kaima. Wow, so, big result. Our tournament leader coming into today exactly. and bounces back. Bounces back. And now the big question is, how can Magnus destabilize the White King? Is he going to simply improve his light square bishop? Maybe go bishop e8, bishop e5? Or is he going to go for broke immediately, initiate chaos with moves like f4? I'm going to say... 20 seconds. Uh, H, H6. Okay, knight to e3. S securing king. Queen to b7. Surprise move. You want... I would I would be so happy to play knight takes e5. Knight to e3 would have... Nine? And ten seconds. seconds. It's Magnus 15 seconds and ticking well. down. And... Magnus is... 10 seconds. Okay, now he goes for g5. Wow. Ooh. Okay, that... That is... He's rolling the dice. Yes. And now the knight comes He's gambling. into e3, targeting f5, bishop to e6, queen c6, attacking the bishop. Now the king comes in, protecting everything. He's Eight gambling. Eight seconds for Pragnanda, and now... Pragnanda. Well timed, c4. Now you get yeah. to play d5. That's a tempo against the bishop. Drive it back. And we have queen h6. Pursuing an attack, he's done it. He's gone. He's gone for it. The he queen has, will come out to f6. This is a very risky move. Honestly. Yeah, he has his. He has the, the attacker's instincts. Let's say, check. Right, but uh, if the King queens get traded off, the position will favor check. Magnus. And now five seconds second. for Magnus. Knight takes e4, threatens d6, mate. No, yes. it's not mate, but it threatens d6. D6. King Knight runs to d7, d6. and another one. Queen. The queen comes in, and the bishop is going to fall off. But, but the knight on b6. Take the bishop, take on f5. Is on freeze, and now he takes. Oh. Take on g5, and after all of the fireworks, Magnus is a pawn down <clears throat> in a queen ending. And Pagnanda, five seconds left, but he can play, play many, many moves in order to build up the time on the clock. Should Three seconds. Winning g4, let's g4. go. As long as he finds a nice hiding place for the king. King g3, just step up the board, king. King h4. Okay, now we've got queen f5 just to drive the black king a little bit further away. King is going to come in. Yeah. He's going to hide on g6. A good hiding place. Got to find a good hiding place. Yeah, g5. That stops queen h3 ideas. Queen is safe. And we're and beautifully uh, because you yeah. can't check on the sixth rank because of and white Prague blocking. Prague is queen. winning this game at ooh, Queen yeah. E5. G6. Oh, the pawn is a marching. Good technique so far. Queen F6. King G8. Yeah, it, that looks natural. King, King G8. G8. And Queen F7 check. And actually, this will be Magnus's first loss in the event. He yeah. went through the rapid undefeated, and now G7 on the board. Uh oh, this is actually How very, do you stop the very, queen very, from very tricky. The uh, two King seconds, one second and handshake, goes. and Magnus Carlsen loses to Pragnananda. Wow. wow. Wow, and Magnus looks very, very disappointed. I must say,